And so what was it that interests you about where we're heading in, in the future? Like what is your personal fascination with whether, uh, you know, how technology is going to shape the next 30 years? So uh, I gradually in, you know, reporting and overseeing and uh, assigning articles became pretty convinced that there were some large scale trends of things happening over and over again, these recurring patterns, these tilts in the way things were leaning, that um, uh, these were not arbitrary and they uh, the, these leanings were kind of baked into the very nature of the technology, the physics of chips and wires, and that we should be um, uh, addressing and embracing uh, the large-scale trends uh, and focusing our energy by using this technology to shape the particulars. So, 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 so the the basic conclusion was: look. This stuff is coming. It really is coming. We can't stop the large form of it. But we have a lot of leeway and a lot of choice in, in, in making the particulars work for us. So um, the, you know, the telephones were inevitable, but the iPhone was not. The Internet was inevitable, but Twitter was not. And so we could see the Internet coming. It was it was. This was before we could see it shaping, and it was like saying, "Look, this is coming. You have to, you have to, you have to use it." And it, and and it may be scary, uh, but we have to use it. And by using it, we can shape it and make it work and and civilize it. And so that's sort of the general uh, impetus of the book was I saw a whole bunch of things continuing beyond where we are right now. You kind of listed them at the beginning of your show, artificial intelligence, ubiquitous virtual reality in our bedrooms, uh, the shift from owning things to accessing things, more stuff that we're making that we have any attention to, to deal with. How, that can be scary. But it's inevitable, so we make it not scary by embracing it, using it, engaging it, rather than trying to prohibit it, turn it off, turn it down, turn it away. So it's so I'm saying that that we can actually master these things by engaging with them rather than trying to stop them. So let, let's paint a picture. Today, my daily schedule is uh, I wake up, I check my phone uh, on my iPhone, I'll go onto my computer, I look at my email, uh, I do work during the day, I'm interviewing you over an internet connection and a screen, I'm talking into a microphone, uh, I might get in a car later on and drive down to a social function where I'll meet some people, I might send a few text messages from my phone. I'm sitting in my light, uh, I'm going to the grocery store or I'm having groceries delivered to, my, to myself. This all sounds, sounds pretty normal, right? And in 2016, as we're recording this, can you paint a day in the life of a human in, say, 30 years from now, um, just an idea of how my day that I just explained might be different or advanced in 30 years from now? Yeah, so so several things to say about that. Um, while you just listed the things in your life, um, what you didn't talk about were the many things about your life that would have been the same as your parents or uh, your grandparents. So you kind of listed just the things that were different. And I would say, I would argue if we looked at your life, a lot of what you do in your life is unchanged. And that actually may be most of what you're doing, sleeping in a bed, uh, sitting down and eating some food with a fork, you know, stuff like that. And so, um, so, so there was a little bit of a bias to focus on the things that are going to change. And I think what you're asking in a certain sense is what are the things that are going to be different? And so, but the first thing I want to say is that we'll probably be still be doing all the things you did. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because this is what, this is how technology works is it accumulates stuff. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily usually replace things. It's more an accumulative aspect. So we have more and more choices. Um, and so um, in addition to all the things that you, that you currently do, you will do some additional things. Like you will probably um, put on some kind of gear or enter in some kind of uh, device that allows you to ex uh, share experiences we would, might call these right now virtual reality, but their names will certainly change. Mixed reality, uh, you know, other worlds, alternative synthetic 
places, whatever. We're going to have many, many words from it. And there's many different types. Uh, none better ex uh, exemplifier than the Pokemon Go, which just appeared seemingly out of nowhere a couple of days ago, which is this mixed reality where you can see another world with your phone. That kind of a thing it will be added to the stuff that you're doing now. Right. And, 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 and the point I'm trying to make in my book is that those screens, those, those options, those opportunities will increase in number and that we may often borrow a screen that then recognizes us and we can use it as our screen even though it may be on a wall somewhere that um, we don't even own. Uh, the second thing is, is there's, this, there's, this, there's this sense in which we um, will be engaging with AIs, but most of the AI, artificial intelligence, the world is going to be in the back offices. There'll be some forward-facing um, AI, and, and those, I think, we're going to have a conversational interface. So in addition to all the things you were doing, you will have a conversation. You'll be, you'll be telling something uh, about what you want to do, to do, and that thing would also be anticipating hmm. um, what you're doing, like a GPS for your life. Right. So today way. it's an assistant. Today you might have an assistant or someone right, who does right. something for you. In the future, it might be an artificial assistant. I guess. Right. And it's sort of always, they're always on like the Amazon Echo, which is sort of waiting for you to, to alert it. But more importantly, it's doing this thing that the GPS does for you, which is it's anticipating your route all the time. And anytime you deviate or change your mind, it's not Flummox. It just has another instantly, it has another alternative for you, another another anticipation. And so in the same sense that it's not just waiting for you to ask, it's actually uh, looking ahead and preparing things in anticipation of what you're going to do next. And if you don't do that, no problem. I have another option for you. Uh, oh, you're not doing that? Okay, no problem. I have another. And so there is this infinite patience in a certain sense of anticipating where you're going to go and always changing it depending on the fact that, that you may change your mind. And it may actually help you change your mind in some senses. So there is a sense in which I think the internet will be not a place that we go to or log into, uh, but, a, but a presence. So, so, so the other thing that I'm trying to add to your picture is that there will be this presence that's there that we converse with that's anticipating, helping, assisting, guiding us in some ways. Uh, that we are communicating, that the, 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 the interface is communication. So right now we have a very screen-based thing. We look at screens, we swipe screens, we bang on screens, but there'll be no screens. I mean, there'll be, on this interface, we'll not have a screen. It'll be a conversational interface where we're having a conversation with. So this idea that you go through your day, not necessarily looking at screens, but having a conversation with this other thing. Yes, Burning Man on the playa in the Nevada desert. This is my mate Ty Neve, and we're walking around. This is the annual festival. 